Antarctica is a place of extremes. It is the coldest, highest, windiest, driest continent on Earth. I'm standing off the coast of Ross Island, and if this were a much warmer climate, I would be standing in over my head in water. But since it is so cold here, I'm standing on solid ice. As I look out in front of me, I can see Black Island off this way, and again, if this were a much warmer climate, I would need a boat to get out to that island. I can also see Mount Discovery, a volcano that was active about five million years ago. I can also see the Transantarctic Mountains, which span the continent. Now, Antarctica has not always had such an extremely cold environment. It used to be much warmer, and something happened to change it to the cold, polar climate that it is today. Many scientists are asking questions about how and why this happened. Did it happen quickly? Did it happen slowly? Did it happen all in one big event that froze over the continent? Or did Antarctica warm and cool, warm and cool, acting as a much more dynamic continent? I'm here with the andral scientists who are drilling through the ice, through the water, to get to the hard rock sediments below. These hard rock sediments are giving scientists key clues to answer these questions. Last year, andral drilled through the ice shelf, which is about 85 meters thick, and they recovered over 1,200 meters of rock core that began to answer some of these key questions. This year, Andrel has returned to drill a second hole. This is on the sea ice, which is much thinner. It's about eight meters thick. And this new drill site promises to continue the story of last year's drill core, offering new insight into how Antarctica has played a role in the changing climate over the past 65 million years. Antarctica is recognized by the international community as a place to be preserved and protected, both for its immense beauty and for what it can offer to scientific research. The continent is protected by the Antarctic Treaty, which was signed in 1959 by 12 countries. Currently, 45 countries have signed the treaty, promising that they will not fight a war in Antarctica or drill for oil or minerals. Ongoing experiments are conducted by more than 4,000 scientists of many nationalities with a variety of research interests including geology, biology, physics, and astronomy. Humans do not live on the continent permanently and there is no evidence of any existing or prehistoric indigenous population. Only plants and animals that have adapted to the extreme cold are able to survive here. Antarctica has many different types of ice. Sea ice floats in the sea and melts off each summer, refreezing during the winter. Ice sheets are thick, glacial blankets of ice that sit on top of land masses. There are two major ice sheets in Antarctica. The East Antarctic Ice Sheet and the West Antarctic Ice Sheet. These large ice sheets feed the ice shelves that hang onto the edges of the continent. Since ice shelves sit mostly in oceanic waters, they pose no threat to global sea levels if they melt. However, without ice shelves acting as buffers, these melting ice sheets would have the capacity to raise sea levels several meters, dramatically altering the coastlines around the world. Antarctica is surrounded by the world's stormiest seas known to sailors as the Screaming Sixties and Roaring Forties. A belt of sea ice surrounds the continent and doubles in size during the winter season, leaving only a few areas ice-free at the end of most summers. 
Oceanographers regard the waters around Antarctica as the Southern Ocean. This ocean is wild and unpredictable, much like the weather patterns across the continent. To keep operations running smoothly, weather forecasters work hard to predict upcoming storms and other nasty weather systems, but this is a difficult task in such an extreme environment. 